we are in government, and by the grace of God, we will be. We will fire any airport authority manager if in six months his airport does not compare to airports around the world. So today we're diving into the world of Nigerian politics and aviation. You might be thinking, what has politics got to do with aviation? And I said, it has everything to do with it. Aviation is more than just a way to get from one place to another and go far beyond just trade and tourism. It is a thrill that drives global economic growth of countries. A well-developed aviation sector generates jobs and improves connectivity, leading to greater prosperity. It is crucial for a country's competitiveness and ability to attract investment and trade. Take Ethiopia, for example. The aviation sector is growing rapidly, attracting investment and supporting the country's ambitions to become a major player in the global economy. And let's not forget the rainbow nation, South Africa. In fact, after the collapse of apartheid, South Africa used aviation to reintegrate and reconnect with the world and attract investment leading to economic growth and job creation. And what of Nigeria? Listen to our story. And this is a story that we must tell so that we can understand where we're coming from and how far we have come on this journey. Have we made any significant progress? How much success have we had? This is a question that I need your answer to in the comment section below. Our economy is in shambles and travel tattered. It's been years of losses in the aviation industry in Nigeria that cannot be measured in numbers. From inadequate infrastructure to corruption, weak institutions, and everything in between. 2023 election is just around the corner, like every other sector. What plans do our leaders have for aviation? This industry is far too technical and way too sophisticated to be left in the hands of people with just general knowledge. To ensure that this all-important sector is not left behind, four presidential candidates, I mean four, were invited for a special breakfast meeting by Aviation Safety Roundtable Initiatives, made up of veterans, professionals, and experts in the industry to discuss their plan, their blueprints for the aviation industry. This has become imperative in order to chart a new course and formulate policies for the sector's future. So who and who were invited and how many honored the invites? The governorship candidate of NMPP, who will be representing the president of NMPP, New Nigeria People's Party, and Professor Pat Utomi, that's from Labour Party. Our look on APC. I spoke with the Southwest coordinator of APC, former governor of Oshun, Mrs. Titi Ponle, and she confirmed to me that the aviation, you know, as usual with APC, we, we love professionals to talk, will be with us. Suddenly, I got a call that is on the way to the immigration office to turn print, and I said to him, if the election doesn't go well, is it so that you can run out? You won't run out. We're going to salvage it together. But these are indications, poor indications from our polity that the people hardly matter. Very sad. But we do matter. Uh, we should prove it in the next election that we matter. So get ready to hear directly from Professor Pato Tommy, representing presidential candidate of the Labour Party, as he tells the story of early aviation in Nigeria and the vision of Labour Party, the ideas for the future of the industry and why it is important for leaders to prioritize the aviation industry how they plan to make it different if elected. Trust me, you don't want to miss this. It's really a pleasure to be able to join you and to say that, you know, there are many things wrong, many things untoward, but we should be able to give thanks because we've come a long way. It used to be really bad in this industry. You went to the airport, you were not sure if the thing would drop out of the sky. I was arriving in London in 2007. The cab took me from Heathrow into town. Was, oh, a plane has just crashed again in Nigeria. I said, wow, that was the one I think the Sultan was killed in. So, records have improved significantly since then. 
but we are far from where we should be. There was a time when if you made a trip by air in Nigeria, it was a whole day and you were grateful that you got where you were going. Actually, I can remember many years ago in Enugu, I was flying to Lagos, had a very important meeting. I was traveling with the, um, in the company of the uh, um, physician to the number two person in the country, Dr. Azundukwe. Uh, and when the aircraft arrived, people were climbing on top of each other from every direction. And I saw him in front and he said, come now. I said, mm -hmm. you are the big man here. Physicians with the vice president, but nobody knows you. If I come anywhere near, it will be in the papers the next day. And I couldn't get on that flight. It left. Fortunately for me, just as I was lamenting and thinking what next I would do, some fellow landed with a private jet and said, where are you going? He said, I was supposed to be going to Lagos. Now I'm going back to town. He said, no, no, I'm going to get something in town. In 30 minutes, I'll be back. We can go together. I said, ah. You see, God still looks after those <laughs> who can look after themselves if, if you don't have... But have you, actually, I used to be part of a fellowship back in the uh, 80s and 90s. Um, and they used to call me the man of the airport testimony. Because I give testimonies about what happened to me at the airport today. At every meeting, literally, because I was always flying. Uh, one of them, you know, really nice and interesting day. Concord Airlines. It's taking off in Abuja. I think it was January 15th. They had all these things. Everybody came into Abuja for those. Uh, and then as it was taking off, the landing gear could not um, they had retracted. So the drama of it trying to come back to land, foam, everything. Eventually landed. And, um, but the airport was closed. And it took hours before it was now okay to come in. And the one Nigeria Airways aircraft that landed came in. Now the crowd trying to leave Abuja was everybody in Nigeria. The then Minister of Aviation and Communication was Engineer Ige. Lali Ige. Then became a bus conductor. <laughs> he now stood at this thing. He went out. He went out. Come. Then they will lift. He went out through the crowd. The, he saw me. Hey, Pat, Pat. I said, No, be me and you. <laughs> I was, I was not going to be lifted through that crowd. So by this time, it was like 9 p.m. I was thinking, Okay. My real problem at that time was how I would get back into town. So they did explain that landed was an NMPC jet. And who comes out of it? Chu Okongu, the Minister of Petroleum. I shouted, true and lie. I was very uh, friendly with him. He said, what are you doing here? I said, I was going to Lagos, but now I'm going back to town. He said, you were going to Lagos. And he went and talked to the pilots. He said, you should take me back to Lagos. Everybody at the airport became my friend. Everybody said, I came with him. <laughs> anyway, the minister is from my airport testimonies. But today, we want to talk very seriously about the future of aviation and how reasonable politicians should approach this very important and sensitive industry. And what we have done in the Labour Party to create a future that we think will be worthy of our children and their children after them. First of all, all theories of economic development are incomplete without a sound place for transportation. For a variety of reasons, there's a special dis distribution of resources, a special distribution of talents, and very, very frequently, even of ideas. And for these to essentially have the knock-on effects that lead to growth, Linkages are critical. Even the great debate on why Africa's growth has been slow 
goes back to the weakness of contacts between peoples on the continent. And people like Jeffrey Sachs and their discussion of why growth is slow in Africa go all the way back to talk about how special disposition of people and weak transportation prevented diffusion of ideas. And so serious governments anywhere pay particular attention to transport infrastructure because it is a hook, a great peg for development. Um, even in our recent history, the failure to understand how important aviation is and how to exploit it in our planning tells us many stories. But let's look at very positive examples. Without the airline business, there would be no Dubai and there would be no Singapore. This is why the strategy of rapid development of those countries were built around an airline. Without Emirates, there would be no Dubai. And we had an airline that was superior to the one that helped Emirates get going. Pakistan International Airlines. Nigeria Airways was far superior to it at the time. But they helped Emirates create a hub. Wherever you were going in the world, you transited somehow through Dubai. They offered low fares and all kinds of things as an entry strategy to bring people into Dubai. Singapore. We all know the Singapore story. It was not by accident that Singapore Airlines became, for a long time, one of the most loved airlines in the world, won the first place award, it was not because they loved an airline, it was because they wanted the world to come to Singapore. And they had to create an airline that brought the world to Singapore, and their country grew as a result of it. When my friend Donald Duke was doing Tinapa, I said to him, Donald, this fantastic project is useless if only two flights land in Calabar a day, which is the number of flights that were landing a day. And that is what has happened. I said to him, look, it's a simple thing. Look at where Calabar is. It could become the gateway to Central Africa for Nigeria. Create a hub, get them to redo this airport, and let it become a hub, hub airport for Central Africa. So from everywhere in the world, you want to go to Gabon, you want to go to Cameroon, all these places, where you want to land in is Calabar and connect to those countries. Then you will have enough people moving through that Tinapa would have the effect it was designed. But nobody listens to Patu Tommy. He just talks nonsense. We all know where Tinapa is today. White Elephant Project, sadly. But if the airline business had been appropriately treated, Tinapa would achieve what it was set up to do. Well, what is the challenge? Very often you hear of Budgets, budgetary challenges. We couldn't afford to do this. We, couldn't, we have only so much to do that. Goodness, if I could ban budgeting in Nigeria, I would. Because oil has made us so unable to think. People think that to get anything done, you earn revenue from oil, you have a budget, you allocate a certain amount of the budget to this problem. No. Capital is free, not free, it's available into this world. And I, and I hate to keep citing Thomas Fiketty. Thomas Fiketty is a French professor of economics, He's probably the best known authority on capital in the world today. He's written a couple of very interesting books, one of which is titled Just Capital, the other one is Capital and Inequality. Because what has separated countries today is inequality. Is uh, capital that has made some countries unequal. And Fikati argues that one of the things that's happened is that globalization has made capital abundant. More abundant than at any point in human history. The problem, however, is that the capital is in a few hands. Which is only a small problem. Because that capital is ready to get more. You know, it was said that somebody once uh, 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 asked uh, Carnegie, the great Carnegie, uh, how much is enough? 
Then Kennedy said, just a little more. Just a little more. So those who have capital are not shy of getting more capital. But their capital is shy of going to places that don't behave well. So all we need to do is actually behave well and all the capital to do all these things will become available to us. And so, because our political culture is built on bad behavior, I mean, all the examples that I've been giving since I've been sitting here, our politicians are so incurably incapable of understanding the needs of the people. So long as they themselves can get something in a very suboptimal way. Let me use the most recent example on infrastructure for you. Nigeria and Egypt woke up literally on the same day and said, look, oh, we need more power. Meanwhile, Egypt had like 20-something thousand whatever megawatts. And they have only 100 million people, half of us. They say, we need more. We, who have 3,000, for twice the number of people that they have, say, yeah, what do we need more? We both went to the same company called Siemens. Mm, Yami Jones will know that company because they used to, <laughs> used to arrange their movement. Siemens. Egypt said, Siemens, look, oh, we need 20,000 more megawatts. All we'll do eh, is offer you some sovereign guarantees. If this doesn't happen there, you go and find the money, build the thing for us. Two years later, it was in place. The power is there. They now are generating like 50 something thousand, 20,000 more than they need. Okay? We will say to them, uh, we'll arrange the money to pay you. <laughs> so they, they began to run up and down. The thing went, spent one year going through a uh, federal executive council. The person who will get his own court will tell the person who will get the court of the other person who will get the other person's court. By the time they finish talking nonsense, Egypt had all the power when we were still in darkness. Nigerians don't know how important it is to get leaders that understand leadership. It's put us down, put us back for so long. So, the problem of infrastructure to drive the growth of the aviation industry is clearly strategy and seriousness on the, of the political class. Don't get those two together, we can forget everything. What can we begin to do? We can lament forever. First of all, we need to vote out these characters. Really, I'm not joking. We need to vote out these characters. None of them is my enemy. The truth of the matter is that this is not the moment for politics of transactions. This is the time to redeem a generation. Is it that you go I wrote the feasibility of his farm when he was still wearing customs uniform in the airport. There, I used to come and see him. This is Mohammed Airport. My good friend. I have nothing. These are wonderful people. I've enjoyed fantastic times in their companies. It is time to save a country, not just take power. So besides voting out people who may be good but don't have the context to do what is needful, it is time for those who are involved to begin to structure things in their own engagement. Look, the biggest challenge to development in our country, in Africa, weak institutions. Our institutions are so weak that we can't get things done. Barack Obama visiting Africa as president for the first time made a powerful speech in Accra in Ghana. He said, what Africa needs are strong institutions, not strong men. How do institutions emerge? One of the finest writings on institutions that I know of was offered by a man who won a Nobel Prize for his work in that area called Douglas North. In 1990, Douglas North wrote a book titled Institutions, Institutional Change and Economic Performance. And the central issue is that it is the interested parties that play the role that lead to an evolution of institutions. 
So if there's a failure of institutions, you are responsible. Don't go and tell me there are some people in government. In 1994, I was on the National Council of Manufacturing Association of Nigeria. Governing can, um, the Council of, ne of uh, NECA, the, uh, you know, and Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Abacha had just taken over. And um, to please those who didn't know what they were doing, said, we will now stop this foreign exchange market that is developing. To this, this free market, we will allocate foreign exchange to those who are creating jobs, manufacturers. See, I was one of the manufacturers, National Council. The first thing that happened, our president of our council, our killing Adamawa, uh, uh, Hassan Adamu, went on TV praising their Bacha decision. And I was supposed to give this talk here at the Sheraton the very next day on the budget at the Harvard Business School Association of Nigeria thing. I said, hey, what should I now say? <laughs> My president has gone and pronounced this nonsense as the greatest thing has happened to the world. So I said, look, there's nothing like the truth. I took the microphone. I said, I'm a member of the National Council of Man. Yesterday night, I saw the president of that council on TV saying that this great decision by General Abacha is what will save Nigeria. Uh, I am sorry to disagree with him, but six months from now, I will wait for the verdict from all of you. It wasn't three months before they started begging that they didn't want that generous treatment. Because you know what will happen? No manufacturers will get it. It will go to chiefs and allergies, who will then sell it to the manufacturers. And all those. We have seen those things before. And so it is the duty of interested parties. Eventually, what happened? Everybody began to come towards a consensus. And we agreed to a foreign exchange market. And Nigeria thrived for a long time until this government came. And we now have multiple exchange rates. And the economy has crashed because of it. History has taught us so much that when we allow ourselves to make these mistakes, people like me wonder, where the hell are we here? Because the lessons have been there repeatedly. Look, let me tell you something. I was going to get to this. We were talking about um, airline pricing and some airlines now requesting you pay in dollars and all of that. You know, so, you know, people have all kinds of emotional responses to this. But look, economics is economics. When I work with Volkswagen, the reason I don't know the license plate of the car that I drive till today is that when I first went to work at Volkswagen, we had a PPIB. I don't know if you remember it. Productivities, prices, and incomes board. It determined the price of goods. PPIB could give you the price of your brand new product. Okay, because that's, it cannot give you price of a used product because a used one can be 10 years old, it can be 30 years old. So PPIB gave us price of new products. It was simple economics for us. If we sold at those prices, we would literally be giving shareholders money to every car that we sold until we go out of business. It's clear you can project it. If you read small economics or mathematics, you can calculate that. So we had to find intelligent ways of staying alive. One of those intelligent ways was realizing that people of, on their own were willing to bid for used cars and pay three times as much for a used car as the official price of a brand new one. That absurdity shows you that you need people who understand economics to run a country. Okay? So what did we do? We were required to change our cars every two weeks. And then we sold the used cars as auction on Saturday. Yeah. And without anybody disturbing them, they bid three times the price of a brand new car to buy a used car. You bought one there. Aha! That's where we're working our way back into with the kind of funny policies we have been seeing in recent times. You see, if you make a mistake, you learn from it. People, say, people like me teach people what we call getting an ROE, return on experience. Mistake is a very important thing. You learn from it. You make the same mistake again, something is wrong with you. 
you make it the third time, you should be executed. <laughs> and now, we find ourselves repeating the same mistake for the umpteenth time. How bad they're doing or something. And, and so, we've managed to, again, destroy that foreign exchange market that was built through greed. Having destroyed it, the airlines are now saying, look, this Naira thing, we're not going to get our money out, pay us in dollars. I, I'm going through it. On Monday, Center of Valleys in Leadership uh, has its annual lecture, which is really a big symposium lecture, probably the biggest in the country of, of talk fests. And we have three speakers coming from the U.S. for the Monday one. I told them to buy the ticket two weeks ago. They said, the agent said he has booked it. Where is the ticket? They sent him money on Monday. The price had gone up more than 200%. He said the, the airline now collects in dollars. So he has to go and buy from the black market. I said, chai. My roommate used to say something we know had. You know they had, he had. So what should we be doing? What should you be doing? One of the things that I think you must organize yourselves to do in this sector is to learn to cooperate even if you are competing. This is called cooperation. There are many of the things that are required in this industry. If everyone starts rushing to do their own, you will never be competitive. Look, you have ordinary brick to service in an aircraft. They carry the thing to London. Haba, they're doing something. But if you cooperate, you can do these things locally, save foreign exchange, and be able to offer better services. And the economists say that airline ticket pricing in Nigeria is pricing elastic. Because the few people who fly ordinarily, somebody's paying for it. They have somewhere they are dipping their hands or whatever. So it doesn't matter if you keep increasing price and keep but you will get to a point where even those people won't be able to fly anymore. And so to build a real market is critical. How do we get to that point? And I think we must focus on these matters. Again, this has already been mentioned by the the president of the association, Dr. Olu. Huh? I need to know you well. Olu. <laughs> and poverty is affecting me. <laughs> Kyle. Baba Olu. <laughs> Baba Olu. <laughs> <laughs> um, we need intermodal transportation integration. Um, let me tell you a little bit about labor strategy. Labor plans to build many new cities in Nigeria. Around our factor endowments, industrial parks and hubs with new cities emerging. We need to plan a system of linking these brand new cities. Part of the problem why we are having these remittance problems for airlines and all of that is that aviation is not generating the foreign exchange it should be generating. This industry can drive a humongous tourism possibility that will bring billions of dollars into Nigeria, but you are not doing it. Each time I fly, as I did last week, to Port Harcourt, I don't know, I usually am begging for the left seat, 2A, 1A, my favorite seat. You look at that coastline as you are going from Lagos all the way through to entering the Scrabble's area you say chai God you love this country too much yo. the people don't love themselves that would be the problem look the airlines why are they so tied to the hospitality industry around the world that whole distance should be just hotels without end all kinds of resorts Go to Gambia, ordinary small Gambia here. See the way they are. Anyway, 
in the creation of these new cities that we are planning to, there have to be real air links to these hubs. You have one great new airport somewhere between Kwari and Onicha, and rail will take you to the coastline, that's the oil areas, the whatever, whatever. The vision industry has to be positioned to drive this development. There's an obsession with uh, certain aircraft type in Nigeria, 737. Now Airbus is uh, showing up with 319 or 3220, whichever one. Most of these should be hubs running on propeller aircraft. And just moving people into hubs, and you will prosper. We will put many to work. And, 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 and all of this. Um, you know, my problem is that when I start talking, maybe a long time ago, you know, and I might need a leash around my waist to pull me to stop talking. But I will try and end quickly because I have to go and talk somewhere else. <laughs> very, very, in the next few seconds. You know, other big problem that we need to face is that this industry needs to be de civil servicized. This industry is a civil service. <laughs> my, my grandma is created in my living room, de civil servicized. Ah, is there? Oh, excuse me, ma. She's my wife. Sorry, ma. I double him in apology. They are the ones that are teaching us all Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look. The people. <laughs> Some people will sleep in the living room today. <laughs> God help them. <laughs> you, know, you know, really, honestly, the linkages in this industry are so, so that they should be seamless. But you get the civil service. Look, I was in, um, I was in Miami a couple of months or weeks ago. In November, it was Thanksgiving, I was in Miami. I just walked into um, one of the top chaps who run the Miami airport is Nigerian. And our fan, MD, everybody, the delegation were there. So they heard I was landing, they dragged me. They, come, they were giving a dinner. And they will tell you what I told them. <laughs> you see, the handshake should be seamless. The many times that we have caused grave economic hardships to our people for things that do, should be absolutely nothing, people are talking to each other. I've suggested to them just a simple breakfast meeting like this. Every month, the CEOs sit down. You have economists who have done surveys, you have uh, users who raise issues of challenges and issues, and you make them, hey, who are, who are here? Two or three of you. Fix that thing before lunchtime. But we go this bureaucracy, we go this, 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 and the country's economy is suffering, people are suffering. You know the misery index in Nigeria is out of this world. We have learned to deal with pain inflicted by others who do not even realize they are inflicting pain on others or enjoy seeing pain. We must also go to standards. Do you know, everywhere in the world, when I'm in an aircraft, I'm waiting for it to land so I can go to the facility. When I'm landing in Lagos or any Nigerian airport, I better use the thing inside the airplane before I go and face it. If we are in government, and by the grace of God we will be, we will fire any airport authority manager if in six months his airport does not compare to airports around the world. And you can come down and use the toilets. We must come to standards. Standards. And you know, these things are easy to do. 
I'm a teacher in a school called the Lagos Business School. The World Bank and Co. About 20, 15, 20 years ago, sent a team to help African business schools with, you know, how they can help their facilities and their blah, blah, blah. So the team came. They had gone to Kenya. There's one, one of the professors in the team, a professor at uh, Georgetown University School of Business, a guy, Professor America. So they came and they started going around LBS and going around. At the point, America turned to me and said, look, why are we here? Say what? Say your facilities are better than ours at the Lagos Business School. And it's in Nigeria. Why can our airport not be better than Heathrow in terms of, we don't have to have the same uh, uh, amount of money in uh, glees and all that. Basic things, you can enter a toilet, use it and come out. What's the big deal about toilets, I beg you? What is so difficult about having a toilet that is clean, that people can use? People don't pay attention. Even in the villa, somebody reminds me, there's a German woman, I think from uh, Julius Berger, who normally supervises the facilities. When she goes on leave, you will immediately know. The toilets are not easy to enter. There are things that must stop. And you have a duty to lead stopping that. What I am saying is that our politics should not be about talking nonsense on the podium and all of that. It should be about detailing how these things happen and how I should be held accountable if it does not happen. My challenge is that people take off from this country, they travel around the world, they see what happens everywhere else, and they come back and they are allowed different here. We are one human species. None is a superior species, but we choose to put ourselves down, and it starts from our politics. Change that, and you will change Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you.